Hi, I'm Nick at SideView, and this is a quick overview video of our sites and groups features for our Splunk app product, Cisco CDR reporting and analytics. So this video assumes that you're familiar with our product and probably you've already set it up and you're looking to do something a little more um, sophisticated around um, locations and people and groups. You may have noticed under the setup menu, there was an item for defined sites as well as an item for defined groups. So I'm going to talk about what those mean, why you should set them up, how you set them up. First of all, what do they mean? Let's start with sites. Sites is really a part of the location fields. Let me quickly edit our fields. Take gateway away. I'm going to use this link up here to reset the defaults plus location and quality. And then I'm going to take the quality and the gateway fields away. So now we have to and we have from. I'm also going to put the word site up here in the keyword field to filter to, you see we have a desk site, a ridge site, and site. I'm just gonna add all of these for now. Take away cause description, take away original calling party number. Let's see what we get. So in cases where the app is able to actually parse out the DN, it's able to extract country code, area code exchange. And you can see for this call here, a calling party number, it's figured out this is a number in Novato, California. And on other calls, let's just randomly skip down to this call where the calling party number begins with a, the letter B. This may, you may know is a, a bridge number. So this is not something that the app can parse. There's no DN here. So nonetheless, it's figured out this is from Houston. This is the site's feature at work. When the DN parsing fails, it falls back to looking up the IP address of that device in our sites lookup. The sites lookup is not just a big flat list of 8 million IP addresses. It's actually a list of subnets expressed in CIDR notation. So this allows the app to use the DN parsing when it can and fall back to office location parsing based on subnet when it cannot. So you have a field for originating site, and that's a ridge site here, a field for dest site, destination site, a field called site that just gives you a union of those two other fields, like I mentioned, and then from and to. Notice that site and the ridge site, dest site, they're always populated. And it may, for like gateway devices, be a little strange. And that's why um, the, the browse app, the browse page rather, really tries to use the best of both worlds and present those in the from and to fields. The from and to fields are also available in general report, but I won't show that there. I won't show that here. You can create tables and charts, um, you know, splitting things to and from, splitting things by site, etc. So that's it for sites. Oh, no, it's not. It is not it for sites. Let's quickly show what the defined sites page actually looks like. Now, sites is really uh, just a big glorified CSV that has a number of, here, uh, a number of, fields in it. I'm just going to very quickly open it up. Subnet, location, lat and long. You are in, under no, under no, uh, you cannot, you don't have to use lat and long if you don't feel like it. It's really there for future features. Occasionally people will throw it in there. Subnet and location are the important ones. So you can use this UI as well. You can use this UI to upload an entire new CSV locally you can use this UI to edit and delete the sites that you already have using this UI here. And you can add new sites using this form here. There's also a little tab it's calling find sites to add. And this is just a tool to help, help make it easier. And the questions, hopefully uh, questions you might have, most of them are gonna be answered on this about page. Okay, that is it for sites. Let me go back and talk about groups. Let's go back to the browse calls page. Groups is not a part of location. Groups is really part of um, people and identities. And there are Unicode login user ID fields. There's the calling party Unicode login user ID field and the final called party Unicode login user ID field. Aside from having incredibly long field names, they're not the most reliable fields. Um, depending on how your call manager deployment is set up, they may or may not be fully populated or populated at all. Um, as you saw, there's a setup groups entry under the setup menu, but let's talk about what it means. So I'm gonna take away our site fields and our from and to. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna search for the word name up here. And you see we have calling party name, final called party name, 
an original called party name. Let me add these guys in. I'm also going to add in group. As you might guess, as you might guess, um, the groups look up maps numbers to names, groups, and subgroups. In my test data here, I don't have it fully populated. In production, you would have it fully populated. So let's fake it. Here I've searched for calling party name equals star just to ensure that I have at least some data. So what this lookup does is very simple. It's, it's again, a big glorified CSV mapping numbers, both extensions and DNs. So beware, you might have to put the same person in there twice. Mapping those numbers and DNs to names, groups, and subgroups. Okay, let's get the calling party fields together so we can see them all. Calling party group, calling party subgroup. And you get the picture. There's there's ones for original calling party, or sorry, original called party and final called party as well. So now that these fields exist, you can, as you see up here, search for them in your filtering fields. So I can do, for example, calling party group equals group equals sales. Is there sales? Let's say that there's support. I'm not sure if I created a sales group here. And now I can do graph calls over time and kick myself off into the wide world of call reporting. I can look at utilization patterns for this group. I can look at whatever I want. Or I can simply enter a few more arguments in here and then create a, a search, create a dashboard panel, create an alert based on this right here. Last but not least, how do I set up the groups lookup? Again, it's under setup, define groups. That's a good starting point. Unlike the site setup, however, this page really just tells you how to make a giant CSV file. It does give you a link to the lookup updater inside your utils, and you can use that. But typically this is a much larger lookup than the site's lookup. And um, the means that our customers use to generate it are usually a little more idiosyncratic. You might be able to export it from call manager. You might be able to get it from the device pool information. You might be able to get it from Active Directory. Um, when in doubt, uh, contact us. We can help. And uh, in the end of the day, you're just making a, a big lookup with number, name, group, and subgroup and putting it in a certain place. So that's it. That was our really fast overview of sites and groups. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. And please watch our other videos.